what role does nutrition have to do with skin health? Because I am very focused on nutrition with my clients in the personal training world, flexible dieting, the role of protein, carbohydrates, and fats, but I have no idea what it does to the skin. So I'd love to hear, I know it's a very general question, mm -hmm. the role of nutrition with skin health, it, you know, couldn't be more broad, but I'm happy for you to break it down into, you know, this is what vegetables do, or, or this is what fruits do, or this is what meat does. I'm not sure, you know, what I'm even talking about at this point, but I'm happy for you to take it wherever you want to. Sure. But the overarching question or concern that I have is what role does nutrition have in skin health? You know, Brock, this is a great question, the connection between nutrition and skin health. There's no one that actually knows exactly the answer. So you have different experts in the field, whether it's dermatologists, they study skin, and they're experts in skin health and disease. You have cosmetic chemists like myself that work with topical ingredients that I could use to help improve the look and feel of skin. And you have nutritionists and fitness experts like yourself, which focus on overall body health and conditioning and of course nutrition you know is a big part of that but no one's been able to really know for sure exactly the connection between okay the, the food i take in my nutrition and what my skin looks like here are the anecdotes and here are some studies that show that high sugar high processed foods those could lead to more acne breakouts etc and may accelerate the look and signs of aging again that's a little bit of data, a little bit of anecdotes, but no one knows exactly for sure. So I always encourage those that follow my brand beauty status to make sure you just eat a balanced diet, try to avoid high sugar, high alcohol, and processed foods, and stick to whole foods and make sure there's balance. So that's my advice, and I think that's advice that a lot of other experts might give. Yeah, that's very close to the advice that I would give in regards to maintaining a healthy physique as well, not just your skin, yeah. because the processed foods are very highly palatable. So they're super tasty. They're very calorie dense as well. So often that doesn't help the waistline when you're consuming these foods. And it's very hard to stop. Yes. If you have a box of pizza in front of you, it's very rare that you're going to say, I'm just going to have one because I'm so disciplined that I'm going to have a green tea and go to bed. That doesn't happen. Right. Right. You grab the, you grab the pizza box you grab, I don't know, some Coke or some Mountain Dew or, or whatever and you put on a Netflix movie and then it just kind of spirals into Maltesers and popcorn and then all this kind of stuff happens. It's not just that one thing. What is the balance between having some sort of exciting diet or foods that are highly processed? Because I don't think anyone's just going to go cold turkey. I'm not going to touch this. Right. We all go to weddings. We all have things to celebrate. Right. What's the balance and how much would you recommend or guide them to have? It, it, to me, it's just about balance. And I think, you know, what does that exactly mean? Hard to say. It's about just not being excessive. You, you know, I think, I think one, one thing that we do know is that diet alone will not necessarily improve or give you the significant improvement in skin that you might be looking for. So it's, it may keep you at a, at, a, at a base level of not getting any worse, but applying skincare products, ingredients topically, that may give you the additional benefit that you, you may need, especially if, whether we're talking about protection like, like sun protection. Sure, eating good food that's rich in antioxidants is going to help your skin, you know, to, protect itself. However, harsh UV, going out in the sun every day, the food is not enough. You need topical skin care, great sunscreens, and great skin care to protect your skin and maybe even repair your skin. So that's one thing we do know, and I recommend that for all consumers who are looking for some level of improvement in their skin. So were you saying that there's foods that actually help protect your skin from the sun? Yeah, to some extent. So having to some extent. Yes, yeah. So eating eating foods that are rich in antioxidants, vitamin C, that is going to naturally help your skin protect itself. However, it's very limited. If you're out and exposing yourself to UV sun on any type of ongoing basis, you need protection, and that's why we always recommend those experts here in the, in the skincare industry and the beauty industry recommend that consumers wear a minimum of SPF 30 sunscreen protection every day, even on cloudy days. 
to give the general population an idea of what foods would be high in vitamin C and antioxidants, what's just a handful of foods that they could include? The green leafy vegetables and fruits. Of course, everyone knows the citrus fruits, the oranges, the lemons, all of those are going to be rich in vitamin C. But the same thing again with some of your green leafy vegetables. Those are going to be great in vitamin C as well. It just so happens that they are the foods that no one really wants to consume. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So those are the ones. But but I think you know I think we're we're, we're learning. I think you know people were doing smoothies. We're 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 trying to make fruits and vegetables a little bit more palatable by blending them, mixing them. So I think that trend will continue. And I think it's great to see people at least becoming more aware of the importance of it. Yeah, that's one thing that I've incorporated into my diet. I. I used to really have a lot of smoothies for breakfast and I despise eating green vegetables just like most people, but I have to do it. So what I would do is just get frozen organic kale yes. and spinach things and, and just throw them in. You can't even taste it. Yep. There's a slight taste difference, but you can, for the amount of benefits that you're going to get from consuming quite a decent chunk of green leafy vegetables, I think it's worth it. So that was you know, definitely one hack that I put into my personal life. Definitely, definitely, definitely recommend it. And again, so we have, you know, consumers that they have may, may have concerns with acne, they might have concerns with hyperpigmentation or uneven skin tone. A lot of great skincare products that can help treat those. And especially with my brand Beauty Step, that's one of our, one of the things that we're experts at is working with ingredients like vitamin C, which is a very tough to stabilize ingredient. What that means is that it tends to oxidize or turn brown and it's rendered inactive. So we've found a way to stabilize it so that you can use it, get the benefits of it, and not to worry about the fact that it might have expired. When I first thought of doing a podcast in 2019, I wrote down everything that I wanted to achieve with the show. And one thing I never wrote down was to spam you with ads of products that I never really used myself. However, I did write down that I wanted to grow it as big as possible and have as many interesting people on the show as I could. To help make that happen, all I ask is that you leave a review on the podcast platform that you're listening to this episode on and share it with someone that you know it will benefit. If you want to support myself even further and more importantly your body transformation and are interested in having me as your coach to help you achieve the results that you just can't seem to achieve on your own, you can visit teambrockashby.com to see what program fits you best. Back to the show. 